Hey y'all, it's Eli with Alchemy Custom Weaponry. We're back in the basement. I know everyone enjoyed the video series with me and Pops. That's RCSJR if you're not in the know. Me and Pops up there at Fort Wayne at the factory. And, and please uh, rest assured, we are going to be doing more of those videos in the future. So uh, if you ever have any video ideas, don't ever hesitate to reach out and let us know. We're always looking for, you know, what kind of content y'all want to watch. All right, with that out of the way, like I said, welcome back to the basement. I'm Eli with Alchemy Custom Weaponry. And today we're going to talk about a gun that often gets overlooked by a lot of potential Alchemy customers and Alchemy customers themselves, and that is the Prime Compact. And I've got two Prime Compacts. They're absolutely gorgeous guns right here in front of me. Now, I do want to tell you a little something about myself before we go too much further is this gun kind of made me a believer in the compact. Like, I've never been a big fan of compact pistols. Just never have. I've always liked having a larger pistol, what I consider a fighting pistol, you know, and a, a lot of folks these days, you know, with all the polymer they're carrying and weakening of their bloodlines, you see they're just not ready to carry a full-size gun. And, you know, I understand, you know, if you've got polymer on all the time, you know, it's weakening the testosterone in, you know, a big heavy gun might hurt your back after a while. I don't know. But for me, I like carrying a big gun most of the time. There are some times where it's okay to dress down, like if you're going to the gym, if you're going on a run, or if it's just a really hot day and you're not wearing a lot of clothes, there are some times where a smaller gun can come in handy. So the Prime Compact kind of fills that role. Now, I'll be honest with you, the Prime Compact isn't quite as compact as uh, you may think, and we'll talk about that, but uh, let's just jump right into these pistols. I've got two of them here with me, and this is the Prime Compact. This is in two-tone. Of course, the two-tone is the hard chrome frame only, so the small parts are blued just like the slide. Gorgeous gun, absolutely fantastic finish. Um, I, I love hard chrome, and I love two-tone. It, it's such a good, good-looking pistol. This one's in 45. Now, before we get too far in the weeds, I do want to tell you, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't take anything else away uh, from this, take this. If you buy a 45 one of these, okay, you need to understand that this is going to be a pretty uh, aggressive pistol, okay? So you, you, will, you will want to really hold on to this gun and really uh, have a good grip and good shooting fundamentals uh, when you go to shoot your Prime Compact if you decide to go for 45. Now. With that out of the way, personally, I feel like this gun is perfect for the 9mm. Absolutely perfect. So here is one of my newest carry guns. Newer, 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 newer carry guns. The Prime Compact with the SRO. Now, a lot of folks have been wanting to see DLC on camera from an Alchemy. Remember in the finish video, we did uh, show a DLC gun, and of course that was on a uh, Cabot Gentleman's Carry. So this is my first DLC Alchemy that I've gotten um, to actually put with the, with the rest of the guns here. And as you can tell, it looks just like Bead Blast Blue. You know, I tell people that all the time. They don't believe me, but it does. Uh, this gun looks just like Bead Blast Blue. Um, and I'll actually get in here a little closer and you can kind of see there it does have a little bit of sheen to it but it's just black so we're going to walk through this gun front to back and kind of tell you about the options this actually was a uh, available gun and i kind of swooped in there and picked it up so that's why you don't see the ring hammer i actually asked to have the ring hammer put on and the rcs told me you got to show some diversity or something like that and show some guns that don't have ring hammers. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's smoking, but here it is. That's a Delta hammer. You know, most people that know me know I love a ring hammer, so let's just get that out of the way. Uh, and so starting from the front here, this is a regular Prime. So this isn't a Prime Elite. A Prime Elite would uh, constitute a gold bead front sight, the HRT cut, the flush cut and crown, and the magwell. Now, something you need to know as of right this instant okay as of whenever this video is uh, dropped uh, look below use your eyes uh, the magwell that we use on the prime compact is different from the one that we use on our larger guns we use stanchion magwells on the larger guns and we do use that more uh, I guess angular edged magwell, uh, very similar to the old SNA on the Prime Compacts at this time. So, 
If you ever have any questions on that, you can always email me and we'll straighten you out. But for this particular pistol, I don't have a magwell on it. Kind of wanted it to be as small as possible. It does have a flush cut and crown barrel. And other than that, it has no other true cosmetic uh, changes. It does have the uh, SRO cut. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And it is obviously finished in DLC. DLC and uh, hard chrome come up a lot in like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a good carry gun. What should I get? Both of those finishes are great. Personally, I'm a little bit more of a fan of hard chrome, uh, especially if you live in an environment that's extremely hot and humid, but DLC is great too. Keep in mind that DLC is not rust proof, so you still do have to keep this thing all and uh, get all that squared away. So what is Prime Compact? So the Prime Compact is actually like more of like a CCO, okay? So what that means is it's like an officer style frame, so a shortened frame, and then a commander four and a quarter inch slide, okay? So that is what makes a CCO. And really it's a great package for carrying because you get the nice long sight radius, you get the reliability of the commander on top, but then if you think about it, what's in your britches? The slide, right? So that's the part that's gonna be sticking out. And so this is actually shortened up to be a little easier to conceal and not print as much. It's really a fantastic idea. Um, the officer's guns, when they first came out, they had some issues with some things and so this was one thing the cco came about um, to actually give you a more concealable 1911 but give you a reliable concealable 1911 and this gun this gun right here man it just shoots lights out it's fantastic love 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 shooting this gun and of course it does have the red dot on it now i get that this is an interesting uh kind of flavor right we've got a non-railed gun it's kind of a traditional looking pistol but it does have a red dot well i'm going to tell you red dots are freaking awesome i like having them on pistols i shoot better with them i and, and not only do i shoot better with them i immediately shot better with them so like the minute that i first started shooting with red dots it was an immediate game changer now i get that that's not going to be the same for everybody and that your mileage may vary uh, i've always wanted to say that your mileage may vary your mileage may vary but for me the red dot was an immediate uh, advantage for me shooting and of course as many as you, of you know a concealed carry handgun you want to have the most uh, advantages to you as possible because if you have to use it it's your life you know and you don't want to play fair in that sense so I do really like the SRO on top I actually think it looks pretty gangster um, I, I really like the look of this pistol um, with the red dot on it I think it looks fantastic I I, I normally change the grips, which is why we do the whole cheap grip thing, but I'm going to be honest, on the black finish, these not these checkered wood grips that the gun comes with uh, looks pretty fantastic, to be honest with you. So I'm actually going to keep that. kind of reminds me of like a small Springfield uh, Pro uh, back when they actually made those. And so anyways, this is a great option for concealed carry, and as you can tell, um, it, it just really invokes a hard use gun it invokes a, a no nonsense right there's not really much bling with this pistol it's all business now while i've got you here let's talk about this red dot sight shall we if you look here okay if you look at the red dot sight look at where it is in position if you can sorry the lighting's kind of weird look at where it is in position to the ejection port you'll notice that the red dot especially this trijicon sro which is famous for going over the ejection ports, you'll notice that it's actually in line with the back of the ejection port. And that's freaking awesome because, well, one, you don't have your Trijicon SRO going over the uh, ejection port and potentially causing issues. I've never had that on any of my guns that don't have R mount, but some people have, so there's that. But also what I really like about it is it makes holster selection much easier. So. I do have my normal, this is a tier one concealed uh, holster. This was cut for uh, a or an RMR 1911. Um, and most guns that have SROs with a traditional Trijicon plate will not fit because the um, Trijicon actually sticks over the ejection port and will run into this little piece here. But if you look here, this gun, 
is, I mean, you can't get much closer than that. So you can see here that with this gun, the SRO comes right to the end of the holster. It does fit. And if you had literally any other mounting system that I'm aware of on that, on this gun, you would not be able to holster it in this traditional um, sidecar. Again, I get that a lot of people don't like that I carry appendix. I do get over it. So that is one of the biggest things about our, our optic cut. The other thing is, if you notice, there's really not much gap between where the hood, this kind of like lens of the uh, SRO is and the top of our slide. We have, in my opinion, one of the nicest red, obviously, listen, I'm paid by the company. I'm going to say this, but it really is true. We have one of the nicest, deepest and recessed back red dot mounts for 1911 on the market. And it really is a fantastic and it's a game changer. So if you were considering uh, wanting to run, uh, you know, an optic on your pistol, I definitely think you should. Keep in mind that we do have one of the best mounts in the industry just off of how low the optic will sit and how far back it'll sit while still allowing you to have backup sights. That's another thing. Um, and, and, and that really is a awesome package, especially for a carry gun. So definitely consider that if you are looking into red dot guns. So again, this is just a quick overview, just a quick kind of summation of the Prime Compact. I feel that it gets looked over often, but if you really are looking for a no-nonsense, hard-use carry gun, this is really not a bad way to go. I mean, I'm st I have a fairly large hand. Um, I mean, I guess compared to the world hand sizes, I might have a medium hand, but I do wear a large glove. And you can see here that my hand will come down onto the magazine. Um, we do use... Uh, Cobra mags for just just for the prime compacts and for the nine millimeter prime compacts. So you can see here that it does kind of come down on the onto the uh, magazine there, but I am able to get a full grip, which is what I really love, and allows me to shoot this gun just like a commander. But of course, the frame is a little shorter, and so it conceals a little bit better. And so. Yeah, that is the Prime Compact. Of course, you can always dress it up. You know, if you're an old school guy, I get it. Let's do it in 45. Let's two-tone that joker. Let's get you something kind of classic, but still a little easier to carry. Now, with that being said, if you're ever thinking, man, you know, my 1911 is kind of big. Maybe I should go look at the, you know, whatever new polymer gadgets out this time. Think again. Still understand that John Moses Browning's design has just been scaled down just a little bit, just a little bit. Still reliable, still accurate, still fun to shoot. It's got all the pros of a full-size gun, a little less ma magazine capacity, honestly, but most of the pros of a full-size gun, and it just feels a little bit nicer when you actually have it holstered and concealed. So definitely consider the Prime Compact when you're looking to get a new carry gun or if you are looking for a new carry gun or if you just you've got a commander you've got a full-size gun maybe you've got a six inch gun let's get you a prime compact let's add something new to the stable okay and uh yes with that being said remember to always carry cocked and locked this is eli with alchemy custom weaponry i hope you enjoyed this and let me know what you think of the prime compact in the comments i'll see y'all later